Have you ever wondered who the Slavs really were before their names filled maps across half of Europe? Most of us think of Russia, Poland, or Serbia when we hear Slavic, but few realize that the true story of their origins is far older and far more mysterious than history books ever told us. Because for centuries, nobody could agree on where the Slavic people actually came from. Were they a forgotten ancient civilization? Or did they rise out of other groups that vanished into time? The truth, as it turns out, is written not in dusty old texts, but in our DNA. Modern genetics has finally cracked open the mystery that puzzled historians for generations. The results are shocking, and they completely rewrite what we thought we knew about European history. The Slavs are one of the largest cultural families on Earth. Over 300 million people today speak a Slavic language. They stretch across Eastern, Central, and Southeastern Europe, from the icy forests of Russia to the warm valleys of Bulgaria. Yet their early story remains a blur of theories and contradictions. For a long time, most scholars pointed to the marshlands between Ukraine and Belarus as the Slavs' ancient homeland. Others believed they descended from nomadic horsemen who roamed the Eurasian steppe, some even connected them to mysterious Baltic tribes lost to history. But then, DNA testing changed everything. When scientists began sequencing ancient remains from Ukraine, Russia, and Poland, a pattern started to appear. The genetic fingerprint of modern Slavs pointed back to the great migrations of the early Indo-European tribes, the same people who spread languages, ideas, and genes across half the ancient world. These early groups, especially the Yamnia culture from the Pontic Caspian steppe around 3000 BC, left behind a genetic legacy that still runs through the veins of modern Slavs today. The Yamnia were nomads, expert horsemen and herders who carried a distinct DNA signature now found in nearly every Slavic population. It's the same genetic thread linking Slavs with Celts, Germans, and even ancient Persians. But what makes the Slavic story unique isn't where it started, it's how it evolved. Because as their ancestors moved westward into Europe, they didn't just conquer, they blended. Around 1500 BC, another culture appeared, the Corded Ware people. They were a mix of steppe nomads and Neolithic European farmers. Over time, their descendants became one of the building blocks of the Proto-Slavic world. Genetic tests show that much of the DNA found in today's Slavs traces back to these Bronze Age cultures, proving that the Slavs were never an isolated tribe, they were a fusion, a living record of ancient Europe's constant blending. Archaeologists later found evidence in the Trojinsek culture, a Bronze Age society in modern Poland, Ukraine, and Belarus. Their burial customs, tools, and craftsmanship suggest the earliest hints of what would one day become a Slavic identity. These were the Proto-Slavs, the ancestors who laid the foundation for one of the most widespread cultural families in human history. But that's only the beginning. Around the 5th and 6th century CE, everything changed. The Roman Empire was collapsing, tribes were migrating, and Europe was being reshaped. In the chaos, one group began to rise, quietly at first, then suddenly, everywhere. Historians call it the Great Slavic Expansion. It started near the Pripyat marshes in what's now Ukraine and Belarus. As Germanic tribes and the Huns moved westward, they left behind empty lands, and the Slavs filled them. But instead of conquering through force, they did something far more effective. They mixed with local populations. They adopted new customs, yet kept their language. They didn't erase, they absorbed. Genetics backs this up. Modern Slavic DNA shows traces of Germanic, Finno-Ugric, and even Turkic ancestry depending on the region. The Slavs didn't replace, they became part of everyone they met. As they spread southward, they came across remnants of the Roman Empire and blended with them forming what we now call the South Slavs, the ancestors of today's Serbs, Croats, and Bulgarians. Those who moved west mingled with Germanic and Celtic tribes, becoming the West Slavs, Poles, Czechs, and Slovaks. And those who stayed in the east evolved into the East Slavs, the ancestors of Russians, Ukrainians, and Belarusians. 
This was not just migration, it was transformation. The Slavs adapted wherever they went, new lands, new climates, new cultures, and through it all, their shared language and identity survived. As time went on, the Slavs began to build kingdoms, powerful medieval states that shaped Europe's future. In Central Europe, Great Moravia rose in the 9th century, covering parts of what is now the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Hungary. DNA from this region shows early Slavic ancestry mixed with traces of Germanic and Avar Turkic genes, proof of the diverse world they lived in. Further east, another kingdom emerged, Kievan Rus, founded in the 9th century. Its rulers, the Rurik dynasty, were descendants of Scandinavian Vikings, the Varangians. But over time, they blended completely into Slavic society, marrying locally and leaving behind a powerful mix of Norse and Slavic bloodlines. Ancient burial sites in Ukraine and Russia confirm this genetic merger, bones revealing a fusion of Viking and Slavic DNA. Meanwhile, to the south, the first Bulgarian empire was formed by Turkic-speaking Bulgars who later merged with Slavic settlers. Their descendants became today's Bulgarians, people whose genes carry traces of Turkic, Thracian, and Slavic ancestry. Then came the Mongol invasion in the 13th century. The Mongols didn't just reshape politics, they left a small but lasting genetic imprint. Some Eastern Slavs, especially in Russia, still carry minor amounts of Central Asian DNA, echoes of that brutal chapter in history. The result of all this? A genetic mosaic, a network of connections stretching from the Baltic to the Balkans, from the Urals to the Danube. Today, when scientists study the DNA of Slavic peoples, they see clear patterns. One of the most distinctive markers is the Y-DNA haplogroup, known as R1A. It's a paternal lineage passed from father to son and is found in incredibly high numbers among Slavic men sometimes over 50% in Eastern and Central Europe. This same haplogroup links them back to those early steppe tribes, especially the Yamnaya and Corded Ware peoples. One branch, known as R1A-Z282, is found almost exclusively among Slavic populations, marking it as a unique genetic signature of their ancient heritage. But the story doesn't stop there. If we look at the maternal line, the DNA passed down from mothers, we find another fascinating clue. Mitochondrial DNA shows that Slavic people share continuity with Europe's earliest farmers and hunter-gatherers. In other words, as the Slavs expanded across the continent, they didn't wipe out local populations, they absorbed them. This explains why Slavic DNA includes the same ancient maternal lineages found all across Europe, especially the groups known as H, U, and J. There are also practical traces of evolution, like genes that allow for lactose digestion, meaning Slavic ancestors relied heavily on dairy farming, or genetic adaptations that made them more resilient to cold climates, lighter skin tones for better vitamin D absorption, and genes related to fat metabolism that helped early Slavs survive brutal winters. Despite all the mixing and migration, Slavic populations remain genetically distinct. Poles, Czechs, and Slovaks show strong ties to Germans and Balts. Russians and Ukrainians lean more toward pheno ugoric and Mongolic influence. Southern Slavs, like Serbs and Bulgarians, show traces of Greek, Thracian, and Turkic ancestry but they all share the same ancient core, the DNA of the early Indo-European steppe nomads who started it all. Over the past few decades, genetic technology has uncovered incredible details that history alone couldn't explain. Ancient burial sites across Poland, Ukraine, and Russia, some over 3,000 years old, contained the same genetic fingerprints seen in modern Slavs. These results confirmed that their roots go deep, long before any written records appeared. DNA studies of medieval remains from the 6th to 10th centuries also showed that the Slavs didn't arrive by conquering, they expanded by integrating. Their genes reveal continuity with earlier populations like the Celts, Goths, and Scythians, 
proof that the rise of the Slavs was built on cooperation and exchange, not extermination. And when scientists tested the remains of the old Rurik dynasty, the Viking founders of Kiev and Rus, the DNA told the same story that Chronicles hinted at, a seamless blending of Norse and Slavic blood. Even Mongol and Turkic influences can be detected today, but only in tiny amounts, showing that while the Slavs were ruled by empires, their genetic identity remained their own. And modern comparisons show just how interconnected Europe became. Poles and Czechs are closest to Germans and Balts, Serbs and Bulgarians to Greeks and Thracians, Russians and Ukrainians to pheno ugoric groups. Yet despite those differences, they all share one deep ancestral foundation, proof that the Slavs are not a patchwork of tribes, but one great family divided by geography and time. And sometimes, genetics can even reveal lost Slavic communities. Small populations in Central Asia, the Caucasus, and even parts of Turkey still carry Slavic DNA, the remnants of ancient migrations, prisoners of war, or traders who never returned home. So what does all this mean for identity today? It means that being Slavic isn't about borders or modern nations. It's about shared ancestry, a living thread that stretches back thousands of years. Even after centuries of wars, invasions, and shifting empires, Slavic DNA has remained remarkably consistent. Whether under Germanic, Ottoman, or Mongol rule, Slavic peoples held on to their heritage, not through purity, but through resilience. And now, with modern DNA testing, people all over the world are rediscovering their Slavic roots. Descendants of immigrants in North America, South America, and Central Asia are uncovering family ties they never knew existed. Because the story of the Slavs is really the story of survival, of people who didn't just live through history, but shaped it. They spread across half of Europe, not by conquest alone, but by connection, by adapting, learning, and evolving. When you trace it all back, every kingdom, every migration, every buried gene, it leads to one truth. The legacy of the Slavs isn't just written in history books, it's written in their very DNA. Watch the next video to discover how Viking bloodlines shaped early Eastern Europe.